It all began with an immense explosion which started the expansion of the universe. 18 billion years ago, all the matters in the universe was squeezed into a hot, dense fireball. The conditions of the fireball was so extreme that not even individual atoms could have existed there. Within a few hundred seconds of this explosion, the temperature had dropped too low for further nuclear processes to take place. But not until about a million years later did the fireball cool sufficiently for the atoms to form. When this happened, the material began transparent, allowing the fading glow of the cooling primeval fireball to remain visible ever since. It is now detected as a feeble background radiation at a mere 2.7 degree above absolute zero. Before a millionth of a second, little is known of physical conditions of the fireball. But very general considerations of gravity which governs the explosive motion of early universe led us to predict that the density of matter would have been limitless, forming a so-called singularity at the beginning of the expansion. If so, this moment represents the real creation of the universe. The Solar System After the explosion event, few parts of the primeval fireball were interlocked within their own gravity to form separate groups of planets. One such group is our solar system, the group of planets, comets and asteroids orbiting the Sun. The solar system's gravitational pull dominates space in all directions, out to a distance of 2.4 light years. The Sun makes up more than 99.95% of the mass of the solar system and is its only significant source of light and heat. The planets can be divided into two groups, the terrestrial planets and the giant planets. The first group stretches from 0.3 to 1.7 astronomical units from the Sun. Five bodies make up the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, the Earth-Moon system and the Mars. All are similar in nature, being made predominantly of rock, some with central metallic cores. The presence or absence of the atmosphere is dictated by the planet's surface gravity and temperature. From 1.7 to 4.9 astronomical units, there is a gap in the system, beyond which comes the giant planet group stretching from 4.9 to 30.3 astronomical units from the Sun. This consists of four essentially similar bodies, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All globes of light-weighted gases, probably with rocky cores. Jupiter is the dominant planet, making up 75% of the mass of the entire planetary system. Beyond Neptune is Pluto, a small frozen terrestrial type planet which may be either an escaped satellite of Neptune or perhaps the largest of the group of small planets that occur beyond 35 astronomical units. What causes planets to orbit the Sun and moons to orbit their planets? Space is a virtual vacuum with almost nothing to slow down a speeding object. A body drifting through space would sail in a straight line for all eternity if it was free to do so. But as the planets fight to fly off in their perfectly straight lines, their course is being tugged into a circular path by the pull of the Sun, an immense entity 500 times more massive than the rest of the solar system put together and endowed with an enormous gravitational pull. This finely balanced struggle between the planet's own momentum and the Sun's gravity was set in motion by the original spinning cloud of gas and dust around the young Sun from which the planets were created. The same is true of the motion of moons around their parent planet. The 17th century English physicist Isaac Newton was the first person to discover the connection between gravity and orbits, demonstrating that the same force that makes an object fall to Earth keeps the planets in motion around the Sun. He also calculated that the force of gravity lessens the further you are from an object. This discovery revealed why the planets nearer to the Sun travel round in faster than the planets that exist in the solar backwaters. Flying on the fringes of the Sun, Mercury feels the full force of our star's gravitational pull. This winged messenger hurtles through space at over 2 lakh kilometers per hour, taking just under 88 days to orbit the Sun. Way out at Neptune, the Sun's gravitational pull is so weak that 64.8 Earth years to complete one full orbit of the Sun.